This is CBN News Watch. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for CBN News Watch for Thursday, October 22nd, 2020. I'm George Thomas. Today, email sent to scare American voters. The news coming as the presidential candidates prepare to face off in their final debate. Pushing against a Supreme Court justice pick. How Senate Democrats plan to respond. And a barber stands up for his business against his state's government. The circumstances that led him to victory, we will explore. And the char charitable initiative leading to a million-dollar handout. Those stories and much more today on Newswatch. But we begin today with our top story. U.S. officials say Iran is responsible for emails meant to intimidate American voters and create unrest in multiple states. Last night, U.S. officials called out both Tehran and Russia for activities meant to interfere in the upcoming presidential election. Despite these actions, U.S. officials say Americans can be confident that their vote will be counted. Tonight, uh, this news comes on the heels of tonight's presidential debate. President Trump and Vice President Joe Biden meet in Nashville. A 90-minute event will feature six topics, including the virus, race, climate change, and national security. The debate will also feature a mute button used to silence each candidate for two minutes at a time while the other speaks at the beginning of each topic. Many will be watching to see how Biden handles the president's expected attacks on his son, Hunter Biden, over criticism of international influence peddling. Biden has dismissed the attacks. Last ditch effort in this desperate campaign to smear me and my family. Most polls, by the way, show Biden with a solid lead, but the Biden team warns the race is still neck and neck in the battleground states. Political analyst David Brody joins me now to discuss the upcoming debate. Uh, David, thanks for coming on the show. So election interference is likely to come up tonight. How can we expect the candidates to use this news to, to their benefit? Well, I think you're going to see Joe Biden go after Trump and say, once again, you know, Russia and Iran and all these foreign actors and how uh, the president is coddling up to all of these uh, dictators and tyrants. I mean, I think you're going to see that. Uh, but but I think you're going to see the president take a much different turn and say, look, this just proves that once again, Russia wasn't colluding with my campaign uh, and, and this and he'll be able to basically take this new information and say, look, what, what's the problem here? Because I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I've been proven, uh, basically there's been nothing here whatsoever. Uh, and so I, I don't know. It's interesting, George. Uh, they're saying, uh, the government officials are saying Iran, or at least Radcliffe, the DNI director, says Radcliffe is the one uh, saying that Iran uh, was trying to uh, uh, basically uh, come against Trump uh, on this. I I'm not quite sure how that fits, especially with the emails that are coming in. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. Yeah. David, how big of an issue do you think the president will make of Hunter Biden's uh, laptop? Oh, it's going to be his main strategy, George. Uh, he's going to do it all night long, for sure. Uh, and I can tell you that there's this new bombshell report out uh, coming not just from the New York Post, but actually from uh, one of a someone inside Biden's world who says he saw he specifically saw Hunter Biden and Joe Biden actually discussing business dealings with China and other foreign entities. This is the first time we've actually heard someone in a written statement. He gave it to the Senate Homeland Committee. Um, uh, actually talking about these business dealings. So look, George, uh, this thing is a drip, drip, drip scenario. And I think the president's going to have some more material tonight for sure. Yeah, and there's some reporting that the Wall Street Journal is going to be coming out with an extensive piece uh, shortly. Uh, the president and uh, Mr. Biden have had a very different approach to the campaign trail this, uh, this week. Do their approaches give us any indication on how they will perform uh, during tonight's uh, debate? The president has been going nonstop. Uh, Joe Biden has taken, uh, taken a break to go and do some debate prep, maybe to uh, try to protect his lead. Your take? Yeah, look, he's had a, a non-existent schedule. I mean, literally, he has not been on the campaign trail for the last four days with only 15 days to go before, for, less than that, actually. What is it now? 13 days to go before the uh, the general. 
uh, or is it 12 days? I'm getting it all confused. The bottom line is, how do you disappear for four straight days? It's one thing to have a light schedule, George, in debate week. That is typical, maybe an event or two. Uh, but he's had no events at all. Uh, so clearly, uh, he's gearing up for this debate. Look, the bottom line is Joe Biden can't make a colossal mistake. He did not make one in the first debate, that's because Donald Trump was talking all the time. This time, however, uh, the fact that they're gonna mute the microphones for at least portions of this debate actually should help Trump uh, because Biden will be able to speak more. That's what <laughs> that's what the Trump campaign has wanted all along. And, yeah. uh, you know, look, the bottom line is Trump's only going to be able to be muted for about 12 minutes of this debate, two minutes at the top of each six minute or excuse me, six section portion of the debate. That's 12 minutes. And look, I think even some Trump supporters wouldn't necessarily mind Trump being muted for 12 minutes. Yeah, uh, As somebody who has covered so many of these political events, David, uh, this is unlike anything we have seen. I mean, there's, they aren't on the campaign trail. It's just been so muted in that sense. David, thank you so much for coming on the broadcast, buddy. You bet, George. Thank you. Most welcome. Hey, by the way, be sure to catch tonight's presidential debate live right here on the CBN News Channel and our other platforms at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Senate Democrats say they plan to boycott today's scheduled vote on the nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett to the Supreme Court. She spent yesterday meeting with Republican senators ahead of next week's confirmation vote. She has the votes, by the way, and is expected to sail through smoothly. But political stakes are very, very, very high, says one senator who will be voting in favor. CBN's Paul Strand explains. Amy Coney Barrett is visiting senators this week who will be joining colleagues to vote on her confirmation Monday. With Democrats saying she should not have even been nominated this close to the election, Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz begs to differ. 29 times there's been a Supreme Court vacancy during a presidential election year. Presidents have nominated someone to those vacancies all 29 times. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or a Republican, if you're a president, you make that nomination. What has the Senate done? Well, 19 of those times, the president and the Senate were of the same party. Of those, the Senate confirmed 17 of them. On the 700 Club Wednesday, Cruz also told host Pat Robertson why he declined to become a nominee each time a high court vacancy is opened up during President Trump's term. A principal judge stays out of political fights. A principal judge stays out of policy fights. If I were ever a judge, that's what I'd do. I'd stay out of these fights. I don't want to stay out of them. I think there is a desperate need in the political <laughs> arena. That's great. The, they, they we need we're... people to fight for our liberties. Cruz's new book, One Vote Away, How a Single Supreme Court Seat Can Change History, shows just how crucial the makeup of the court is, as are the elections that decide that makeup. This election we've got in November, the stakes we've got here are fundamental rights on the question of abortion. We're one vote away from the court striking down every restriction on abortion across the country and mandating the Democrats' policy position, which is unlimited abortion on demand up until the moment of birth, partial birth abortion, with no parental consent, no parental notification, and full taxpayer funding. Paul Strand, CBN News, Washington. Thank you, Paul. Coming up, how letters taught a woman about God's faithfulness through her grandfather's struggle. That story in a moment. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. I'm Ephraim Graham, and this is Studio 5. Cruise with me as I discover the good things happening in the world of music, sports, television, and movies. The fact that Ryan Coogler was going to be directing the film, I knew that something special was going to happen. We'll chat with artists at the forefront of entertainment and explore the connection between popular culture and faith. I asked my pastor, I said, well, does that mean I'm supposed to be a preacher? He says, well, no, you already have a pulpit. Watch Studio 5, Wednesday night at 9.30. Remember for a moment what it was like to be a child. You believed every story you were told. You saw a world full of endless possibilities. 
What stories will the world's orphaned and at-risk children believe? We believe the Bible tells the only story truly worth believing. We believe that every child should have the opportunity to dream, the chance to take challenges and turn them into possibilities, the chance to stand on the promises of God, to recognize their place in the greatest story ever told. They have their whole lives ahead of them. Theirs is a world of endless possibilities. They are looking for a story to believe. We will tell them that story. Will you join us? <laughs> CBN News presents an election night special with live coverage starting at 7 p.m. Get updates on the campaigns plus analysis on the shifting balance of power. Watch on the CBN News channel or on the CBN News app. And welcome back to the broadcast. Imagine taking your wife and children to a foreign country to run a school and serve the people who live there. And instead, you get separated from your family, drafted into your country's army, and then you end up in a prisoner of war camp. That's the story of Shadow of the Sun. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell spoke with journalist and author Marnie Blom about her new book in which she details the story. Take a listen. Marty Bloom, uh, thanks so much for joining us here on uh, Jerusalem Dateline. It's great to be here, Chris. Shadow of the Sun, this has been a labor of love for many years. Tell us about the book. Well, actually, it's about a story, an against all odds survival story that took place 75 years ago in the Asia Pacific War, ending of the Second World War. And it's a story actually about my family. In 2013, I came across these little tiny letters, they fell out of a box my sister's basement. And when I looked at them, I realized these were the letters that my grandfather wrote as a prisoner in the jungles of Northern Thailand. And he's one of the POWs that was working on the Burma Railroad. And these were letters that he penciled to my grandmother. They were secret forbidden letters. If he was caught, he would have been killed. But in the process, he was documenting what was taking place. So it's an eyewitness account of the POWs. Now, my grandfather was actually a missionary to Indonesia. He was sent from Holland in 1928, and he was conscripted by the Dutch Indies military. And so he was captured by the Japanese when the Japanese overran the Dutch Indies. And then he, over three years, that he was actually a slave a prisoner to the Japanese, and he was sent to Northern Thailand to work on the Burma Railroad and eventually ended up in Japan where they dropped the atomic bombs. Tell me why this was so important. To, it was put on your heart to do this. I started in 2013, and now the book is being released at a time when the world is faced with, a, with great uncertainty and a lot of people are suffering. And this is a story of God's faithfulness during a very difficult time. Also, it's a story of choosing to trust God in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of deaths, being surrounded by death, being surrounded by starvation in a completely changed world. You know, I can relate to this back in uh, 2002 when my mother passed away, we found 75 letters that my dad had written to my, uh, to my mother and uh, very compelling, but Actually, the circumstances that your grandparents went through were much more uh, desperate and dire, weren't they? Yeah, and actually, as my grandfather was a POW, basically a slave to the Japanese, my grandmother with seven children was put into a Japanese internment camp on what is now the island of Java in Indonesia. And one of her children were murdered, and three of the others got very, very sick, were on their deathbed as well, but thankfully they didn't die. And so in my grandfather's notes that I discovered, um, he writes about how in that season of difficulty, in that crucible, he was able to really see his heart. He was able to see himself in a new light, and he was able to see his failings as a husband and as a father. Most of his friends perished. He was even on his deathbed. He contracted dysentery, which basically killed the prisoners. There was no medical care. And he just said, God, give me another chance. And he hang on to the hope that we have in the word of God. And that's actually why the book is called Shadow of the Sun, because the sun 
represents the red sun on the Japanese flag that they were under, prisoners under that flag, but also represents Psalm 91, verse 1, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. And they clung to that scripture, and that gave them great hope and strength. Well, it's such a compelling story. I've read it, and I heartily recommend it. Uh, Tell us, when uh, people read this, what do you want them to take away? I hope that their faith will be encouraged, that their spirits will be raised up, and that they will have hope in God. That God, he hasn't abandoned us. I know a lot of people are suffering right now, Mm. but God, even in the midst of the impossible situations, God can come through and provide for us. And I detail that in the book. Well, Marty, tell us uh, how people can get the book. Go online and go to www.shadowofthesun.org. So it's Shadow of the Sun, the name of the book, dot O-R-G. This story actually was written as a screenplay first. There is that sense of you enter into that time period of history and you relive the events with my family, but also my hope and prayer And I'm working towards getting this on the big screen as well. Well, you know, when I read the book as well, Marnie, that's exactly how I felt. I mean, this sounds like a movie, looks like a movie, reads like a movie. I hope that can finally get to the big screen. And now we're here 75 years after the end of World War II in the Pacific. And uh, it's a very timely uh, book. And uh, blessings on your work, Marnie. Still ahead, clippers in the court meet the 77-year-old barber who denied his governor's uh, shutdown orders and won. That story in a moment. Daddy? Yeah, buddy? How many nickels are in a dollar? There are 20 nickels in a dollar. How do birds fly? Does milk really make my bones stronger? Yeah, yeah. Daddy? When we die, will we go to heaven? Do you have the answer to life's biggest question? Call the 700 Club. We'll help you find answers to the important questions life brings your way. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board-certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog, and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can, and I'm gonna show you how, along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD, only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy, improve your memory, Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD Protect Your Brain and get it today. Welcome back to the broadcast. A county prosecutor in Michigan says he's dropping all charges against 77-year-old Barbara Carl, a barber by the name of Carl Mankey. Mankey defied Governor Gretchen uh, Whitmer's COVID-19 lockdown orders and kept his barber shop open. The Michigan State Supreme Court ruled uh, recently ruled against the governor, saying her executive actions were unconstitutional. On this week's episode of The Global Lane, Mankey explains what he expects will happen next. Michigan Supreme Court ruled 7-0 to zero, uh, against the governor's actions that she returned my license without a hearing because she didn't give me a hearing. It was more of a police state tactic, which was pretty typical of this governor. Uh, so they had to return my license, but now they're giving me the hearing. So, you know, but nonetheless, I, I predict that it'll probably go the same way as these other things have. The Supreme Court also came back against her. 
uh, and said that everything that she has done after April 30th of this year is invalid. So it's uh, she's having to start all over again with a lot of things. And she's shifting things around, trying to somehow or other save face. But uh, uh, the Supreme Court has pretty much ruled against her. Well, I, I understand the Supreme Court, the state Supreme Court, said she needed to have legislative approval on these things. Uh, you just can't go and pass laws without the legislature. That isn't what the governor does. Well, I remember the start of the summer, 10 Michigan state troopers descended on your shop just to serve you that cease and desist order. That seemed a bit excessive to most people. Why did that happen, Carl? And how did most uh, Michiganders respond to that? Well... You know, for the most part, those guys were doing the job that they were, you know, they have to do. Um, I have a good relationship with the with the law and order, the police departments. Uh, I, I knew, I understood it, you know, that they they had to do that. They had to bring those in. I offered them all a haircut. You know, I said that uh, they looked like they needed one. And, you know, they, they came in and, but there was no resistance here. I had, uh, I had families throughout this barbershop. Good heavens, I, I remember that day because I had quadruplets in here. And they were jumping around and, you know, just having fun with with uh, uh, being kids. And they, these all of a sudden, these stormtroopers come in, you know, with, you know, all serious. Well, I, you know, I kind of softened it up a little bit by, uh, I, I had no hostility against them. They were just doing their job. How did the local media depict you there? Uh, were they depicting you as someone standing up for your constitutional rights or as a crazed, reckless barber? Well, I think, you know, that's a, that's a good point here. You know, I, I was, I've been thinking this over. They really didn't support me, but that was okay. I would much rather err on the side of being a little crazy, pushing the edge maybe a little hard, than ever err on the side of where people would consider that I was walking the same path as cowards. I, I can't do that. Uh, so I would much rather take the, you know, the road that I've taken, regardless of our, our local newspaper here is pretty left. Has anyone you know, in your shop gotten COVID-19, Carl? No, no, none that I've ever heard. They, they contact Trace, from my understanding was, is that uh, they contact Trace 3,000 people that had gone through this shop. You know, those that they weren't all getting haircuts, they were a lot of them were just coming in to, you know, to support me. And uh, uh, nobody, they, nobody got COVID. So, I mean, this has been six months and I'm still standing here. I haven't gotten COVID. And I know um, you've always said uh, the reason you wanted to stay open is you had to feed your family. You had to pay your bills. So how is business now? Is it still down or bouncing back? Well, it's, it's off a little bit. You know, it's off a little bit. There's still people that... Uh, See what you know what I what it sort of distresses me that we are developing a nation of neurotics, you know, with this stuff, uh, and it uh, there isn't a good balance, you know, of information that's coming from both sides of this thing. There are scientists that are saying that this at this point now that original narrative has been turned on its head that we're not all dying. There were not two million of us or two and a half million of us dying of COVID. Our hospitals are not overrun, uh, but we don't hear that news. We only hear the fearful stuff, you know, and I like that little anachronism, you know, of, uh, or an, an acronym called FEAR, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. And that kind of fits this whole narrative right now that uh, the government is putting out. It, okay, quickly, quickly, Carl, because we're running out of time. Finally, okay, what do you sure. say to governors of other states that are still shut down? Stand up. You know, open up. You know, uh, quit acting like a neurotic. You know, look at the science behind this thing. Don't just look at your political career. Look at the truth behind this stuff. I challenge those guys. They're cowards. You know, they, they, they won't stand on the side of what's true and right. They stand on the side of what's politically correct for them at the particular time for their own, uh, for their own advancement. Okay. Would, the the man here. who stood up for the Constitution in Owasso, Michigan, Carl Mankey, thank you for sharing with us today. Thank you. You can watch Global Lane tonight at 9.30 Eastern right here, as always, on the CBN News Channel. Coming up, financial blessings, leading a church to give more than $1 million.
to those impacted by COVID-19. What the pastor had to say about the call to act. Inspiring story just ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm Ephraim Graham. Welcome to Studio Five. Get on it. All that's new and now in the world of uplifting entertainment with celebrity interviews. There's a higher contribution that I will make. Musical performances. I'll give you my best praise. Plus movie and TV news. See it and be uplifted. On Studio 5. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern at CBN.com forward slash Studio 5. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Welcome back to the broadcast. When a church saw their giving go up, they decided to give that money away. Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, has donated more than $1 million under their tithe, the, the tithe initiative. Since April, the church gave 10% of their tithes to the community. 69 community-based and national organizations benefited from their fundraiser, all in an effort to support COVID-19 relief and other needs. Let me tell you how tired the tired began. Um, clearly, there was a lot of concern and, dare I say, even fear, some panic of what COVID would do. What would our numbers, specifically, let's be honest, would our giving go down? And in the very first two weeks of worship online, our giving was up almost 25, 30%, but that we were demanded to give that away. And that's when tie of the tithe into my spirit as an idea of here's how we do it. Let's take at least 10% every week because we're, we're about 10 to 20% over and just give it away. Just give it away. I find a way to do that. Oh, what a fantastic idea. Key partners in the in initiative, by the way, include Microsoft and Apple, both of which have provided technology to support distance learning for undeserved children. That's an awesome story. Well, folks, that's it for this edition of New CBN News Watch. Remember, you can find more of our news programs on the CBN News Channel anytime or online with CBNNews.com. From all of us here, from the headquarters of the Christian Broadcasting Network, have a fantastic rest of your Thursday. Goodbye and God bless.